This is Ben from New Age Caravan Zadlade and welcome to your Wayfinder. I'm going to spend a bit of time going through how to set everything up and then pack everything away so that way you're not left in the lurch. The first thing that you'll need to do as far as towing goes is switch the pin over for your, from your ball to this DO35. This is going to be located in your front tunnel boot. Now the hitch itself is fully articulating so when you've got your car here, you get this over and lower it down. This will then fit in like so. This red button, you will have a very distinctive click. That means that it's all locked in. So any sort of movement is all gonna be articulated through here. Now to undo it, you again have to do a very deliberate movement. You push this down, slide that back, and then that will lift out, okay? This tool here is actually what's gonna help you lock that on so you can tighten that up onto your tow bar tongue. Once you've got that set up, we've got your gray Anderson plug and your 12 pin plug set up through there as well. To do your chains, something that not a lot of people are aware of that, but is very, very handy to know is to actually cross your chains as you hook them up when you have your D shackles through there. So that way, if for whatever reason, the car and caravan become two, if this were to fall, it falls into a cradle. So very, very important to know. Once you have everything set up, ready to go, you of course take your handbrake off, make sure all of your legs are up and away you go. Once you've rocked up and you've unhitched safely, this speed brace, again found in your tunnel boot, is how we get the legs set up. So your legs provide stability. So that you will pull down and get straight down. You'll hear that that clicks in and sits flush. Then it's best to do the rear as well to make sure that both have a gap between them so they can go up or down. Now it's important to know that these are stability, stability legs only, they're not for jacking. So to get it to your right height, whether that be up or down, that's done with your jockey wheel. Once you've got the height itself set, that's when we level these out. So to do so, once we've got this at the right height, your speed brace goes in and winding down. Again, it's very easy. Once you get a little bit of tension, so you can feel that it's actually, it's gripped. It's seriously a quarter turn to a half turn more. That's it. You don't want to do any more because again, stability legs, they're not jacks. Once you've done these two, it's the same on the other side. It's basically just repeat the same method. So that way it's stable in all four corners of the van. So basically this is how you'll get it off of the truck. Again, in the tunnel boot, you will have your winder. Your winder will go just in here. You'll see that there's directions for up and for down. Just insert from here, like so. Before you wind, we wanna make sure that we undo each of the latches that'll be in the corners. So there'll be four in total, two on each side. Start winding. I keep an eye on it to make sure that the gap is even across when you're first starting. But even if you get, say, uh, to about there, just again, it always pays to go around, make sure that it's all coming up evenly on both sides so it's all square. If it was packed in correctly, as in if, say, there was too much bedding on one thing or the canvas itself was scrunched on the other, you'll find that one's gonna to wanna to pop up earlier than the other originally. If it does happen, just keep wanting a little bit, make sure it's not drastic and it should level itself out. Again, getting to about the halfway point. Again, just checking both sides, perfect. And we'll keep on going. Okay, we're nearly getting to that point. This here is your guide wire. So what this will do, at the moment it's loose, so that's fine. We'll keep 
winding. So you can see that that's getting tighter and tighter. So we just go slowly and then a little bit left. Perfect. So not super tight, but enough. all the way we can take this out pop it back in and now we bring the beds out on each side the easiest way that i've found to do this if i'm setting it up by myself is to grab along this side give it a bit of a yank because they are quite heavy slide that out you'll feel the more that you come out the harder it does get but if you give it a bit of a wiggle, you'll get to the stage where it won't go either way because it's square at the end. That's how you know you're at the full length. Then it's the same on the other side. Same with the rear. Bring this out. And again, similar thing. You'll feel that that's out all the way because it's not coming more one side than the other. So that's how we know it's out the entire way. So once both of the beds are out and in this position, we can get these what are called C channels. They'll all be stored in your tunnel boot. They come up and there's a little gap right at the top there and they wedge in like so. Then this little Velcro part that I'm holding, you loop it around and it'll latch onto itself. So that will go, again, on each of your corner poles. Now these C channels go there because if there were any malfunction, then this will actually protect the roof from actually coming down at all. With these C channels, they're all the same size. The way to know top from bottom is top is all square, but the bottom has the Velcro and that little cutout part there. So that makes it easier to come up and in. So again, to install this, I pop it along there simply slide it up in and then again this velcro tab will just go around and latch onto itself okay and the reason that I do this before I pull the canvas out is because this canvas has to be velcroed around and I find that I get a better seal through this way once I've set the beds up but we need to have those in first now to get the canvas around the bed I just pick it up, unfurl it. <clears throat> then you'll find with each part, you've got your corner. So where there's Velcro under here and Velcro on this side, that you want those corners to marry up like so. Now I don't, you don't want to uh, get them fixed just yet because we need to set the roof inside. Same on the rear. And again, finding that corner. If it's a bit tight, it's supposed to be because it is quite a taut canvas. But you get it to the point where this is down far enough. So when the Velcro latches, you still have this part below. So the bottom of the bed should run along that stitch line. As you come into the van at this stage, you'll notice that the canvas is still down and there's two metal poles. This metal pole is on a pivot. This one is an arm with two ends. So that clamp is the one that you want to clip into that roll. You want this part facing upright. So that'll clip into the middle like so. Simply lever up Give it a bit of a push and a jiggle out. And then like so. The thing that most people say seem to have an issue with is actually getting the canvas nice and tight once they've done that part. 
or some people will attach that before they try to get the poles in. It makes it very, very difficult. The best thing that I've found is to try from smack bang in the middle, pull it down and Velcro underneath. And Velcro underneath. From there is each of the corners. So again, working from the furthest point, closest to the body. You may notice that it wobbles, that's fine. That is completely normal at the moment because we still need to put the supports along. You'll have four poles that look like this. Two are shorter than the other. The shorter ones will go up the front, the longer ones at the rear. And that is because of where they actually connect up in relation to the base of the bed. Now they've got two joints. You've got your circular one through there and then the open one. The easiest way to do it is with your circular, just in through like that, clip that in. So the tricky part is actually getting this aligned with that. This one might require a little bit of a wiggle, but then that's set. So now if you get to the stage where this, the hole itself is sitting below or up here, you hold with that part in, you hold this and twist, that will actually adjust the length. So that way you can get it set to exactly how you're wanting. You of course take it out of this plastic tubing, but I'll let you do that. Now it's time to cover this up. If you're shorter than oh, 6'2", 6'3", you're gonna need a step ladder to reach the full whew, part along there. Now this one is probably the only one that won't sit flush. And again, that's with that cable through there, but that's not nothing to worry about. Now, even with that fully extended, if it's just that little bit off, you can get one of the kids to hop on the bed and that'll help bring it down. But that way, the canvas still stays tight, but the bed's still fully supported. Mate, once you've arrived at the caravan park, if you're gonna be connected up to power, 15 amp extension lead, and that will go in. If you ever have any issues where you're getting power through, but nothing's happening inside, check your circuit breaker. So you've got a TV antenna on the roof as well as your TV. If you're staying somewhere like a station stay and they've got their own uh, aerial, you can actually get an auxiliary one through there if your one on the roof is not working. Through here is your fridge vents, okay? Now we have these on the off side. You don't have to worry because it's only a 12 volt system that it's venting, but if it were say gas or anything like that, all the ventilation is on the off side, not on the on side where you'd be sitting. Same with your microwave as well. Again, all ventilation through your microwave. One key point is if you are staying somewhere where you're gonna have mains water pressure, is this fitting here, you get just a regular tap fitting, connect up your hose, and that will in fact bypass your water tanks. Okay, so that way you can have as much water as you want. It doesn't, you don't need your pump on or anything like that. That's all mains pressure. Should you get the unfortunate situation where you've got a flat tire, the jack, which you'll also find on the offside front part of your tunnel boot, is set in through here. Now, this is a side winding jack that will actually lift up. I won't do that at the moment because it would put too much pressure on the stability legs to install slide the jack 
through. Then you fit this pin through the top and start winding. That will then lift it up. And at no point do you actually need to go underneath the van to take the wheels off. It's all done externally of that, thanks to the jacking system that we've got. If you are going to be off grid or not have access to mains water pressure, that's where you'd want your water filler. So your water filler, it's only got a narrow opening. So if you were to have a hose, you want to have the connection off so you can fit the hose all the way through. What most people do is actually get a filter hose side, which makes things much easier for them. You don't have to worry about getting any um, nasties through your tank. Fill that up and that will do both tanks because there's only the one filler for your two tanks. With the Adventurer Plus model, we've got here the external shower. You see that there's hot and cold. That is because it is connected to your hot water system. Now, your hot water system is both gas electric. So again, if you're staying at a caravan park and you connect it up to 240, you'll just have this running on electric. Once you're off grid, it's just a matter of turning your gas on and it's all taken care of in the switch, which will go through with you shortly. Uh, you don't actually have to come out here and ignite it yourself. It's all done for you. When you're at your caravan park or you're away, anything that gets tipped down your sink is going to come out of this pipe here, okay? So if you wanted, you can actually get a hose that'll take that away. So again, if you're out bush, you can water the plants. Um, most caravan parks will actually have a dedicated sludge point for that. Now, let's say that you've filled up your water tanks, you've done your trip and you're headed back home. And once you get home, if you think, okay, we're not going away for a little while, we can empty the water tanks. That is done just under here. and it'll be the same on your other tank, just forward of the axle. On the on side, basically you can have whatever you want through here. This is your picnic table. It does have a maximum load capacity of 25 kilo. All right, so you've got your light through here as well. Now these points here, you've got your Nava 12 volt, your antenna outlet for your TV, and also a 10 amp 240 outlet. So these are designed in mind with your TV, okay? So your TV will have legs that it will sit on. So you can have them sitting out here. So if you did want to come outside and watch some TV, you can have everything set up, ready to go. If not, you've got external speakers, front and rear, um, and that makes it very easy if you're wanting to Bluetooth some music through or listen to the footy, whatever you like. The awning, again, this pole here will be found in your tunnel boot, the hook end, and then your swivel ends will actually go, lock in the top, and just start unwinding. Now this is what's called a box awning, not a bag. The box means that it's actually pre-wound. So all that you have to do is wind it out and wind it in, and it'll keep the same tension through there. Now you'll notice that this is coming down lower and lower, not to worry, that's what it's supposed to do. let's say about here so the legs are actually under here now this will slide out and pivot down now you can do these legs either latched into the caravan which I'll demonstrate in a moment or if you're wanting them out to adjust we undo this one here and lift it up tighten that off for the moment and you can get these set to whatever height you like it's always best to have it sloping downwards because if it does rain you don't want the water to pull through the middle you want it to run off to get it set to the van itself again we'll do it one by one we can extend that out this here latch slides up flick that in and lock down. This comes up, slide the bottom part in, sitting flush, push it down. Once that's locked in the spot, you simply push that up to get that level and then fasten it. When getting the awning set up, just try to get it set as high as you can while still allowing for that slight downward slope. That is purely to allow for when we get the door set up, that still needs room 
to open freely without hitting the awning. The door, to set it up, it looks complicated, but it's easy once you know how it's done. The first thing that I do is I actually try to fold this door part, the Velcro strips, away. So that way you can see the two holes where they actually, where the door itself will lock into. So we've got one here and one here. Once we've cleared room for that, what I do is I have one arm up, twist, let that come down, twist, and let that come down, then the door will swing. Now, you'll notice it's the entire door frame that comes away. So from this position, with the door now released, this part here will come up, and that will allow us to see this hinge freely. What we want to do is lift that part up higher and pivot the bottom in to get those aligned with those holes. Now, just to show through there, this part here, you've got to make sure that that's not fastened. That's just sitting there loose. And that'll actually slide in like so, which we can then tighten up. But then this hinge, we will need to push. So you see how that is popping? You just need that like so. And lock those over. So that has actually got that lock, that entire frame locked into place. The next step for us is getting these aligned. And twist, align, make sure that that's sitting in flush, twist, and then just that last little bit of Velcro. Same on this side over here, twist. So once that's like so, undo, push that back down. Now, don't go to open the door just yet. The door is actually still locked to the frame. So we need to push, twist open, push, twist open. This is the part that you really need to make sure that your awning is up nice and high. Because when you open this, if it's not up high enough, that's gonna wanna hit like so. These have got quite a sharp edge, so you do need to make sure that that will clear. And again, this part is quite sharp. All right, so if you're gonna have the door open and leave it open, it's fine. But beforehand, we make sure that this part here is up nice and high. Now, from the externals to finish getting the door itself set up, I put it back together. Make sure that that is not pinched. Sometimes if fitted incorrectly, you'll find that this part might sit up or that part. And again, that would be because it's not in that particular groove properly. So it hasn't been loosened off correctly. To finish off, again, just Velcro up along the sides, like so. Done. Now to open and leave open, that's actually what this little latch is there for. It gets windy because again, it is quite a big sail area and it starts going up and pivoting and whatever. Just pack it up. Make sure that this door's closed. Okay. Then we'll be unwinding. So it's again, simply letting that come down and same on the other side let that come down all the way so just unlock lift up pivot up and out push this in again i've got all the plastic on there because it's new i'll let you take that off if you wish slide up you'll notice that this part will actually lock in and go straight and that'll sit in like so. So from here, those legs are locked in and to avoid any wind damage, just wind her up. Then unhook and we'll pop this back. 
So once the door is completed, simply take these straps off. You don't need them dangling there. You can simply fold them up and chuck them in one of your drawers. You've also got your 28 inch HD smart TV and DVD player. Now the legs themselves are in there, the remotes, the controls, everything is all in through there. They fit in just into here. Now there's a little green light. That there will let you know that your antenna, TV antenna is on. To set your TV antenna up, it is done just through here. Okay, similar to the winding motion to actually pop this up and down. There's a downward motion and an up motion. So to wind up, simply rotate and then it'll hit a point where it won't anymore. That's how you know it is up all of the way. Now you'll see that this has an arrow that'll marry up with something that is fixed to the ceiling. Because you can pull this down and twist it around for you to get the best reception, the way that, that you can pack this up so you get that set up so it's still aligned, that way you know that when you're putting it down, it's gonna go straight down and not out to the side or forward or anything like that. And then winds down. Very easy to do, you'll feel it get tight and that's how you know it's down at its lowest point, at its travel position. So through here you have your control panels and your display. This one here is your load. Turn that off, you've just turned off the entire 12 volt system. Your fridge will need to run off of 12 volt. So if you're wanting this fridge to keep cool, that needs to be on. If, and to travel, you just switch everything else off, okay? So your internal lights, which is your big strip light above us, we can turn that on and off through here. We've got an external light. So this one here is actually for your on side, so out near the TV area. Your water pump, it's a bit hard to hear at the moment, but that will switch your 12 volt pump on. And then your shower light. So above your external shower, there's actually another light there, okay? So this is your hot water system if you're wanting to use it on gas. So with the gas bottle on, you flick that, that will then start flashing. Now with your gas bottle on, that will actually be priming. When it's flashing, that means that it's priming. It'll then go solid after mm, 20 odd seconds. When it's solid, that means that the gas is on and it is, it is operational. Through here is your display. So at the moment it says that we're plugged in to 240 and we've got a total output there. So if you press through, you'll notice that it's got your tanks. Tank three and four are dummy tanks. So they've just got the minimum in there. It's one and two that we'll worry about. Uh, we've filled those up. So again, we can test everything before we send it out to you. And then we've got the radio. So this is much like your car radio. The only difference is that there's no CD player. Something that's new to the wayfinders are these little lights here. These are magnetic and these are designed to stick to these poles in here. So if at night time wanting to use some lights, these are already included now. Then there's a few of the essentials, your fire safety blanket, your first aid kit, and your fire extinguisher that is actually just by the door there as well. So these here are gonna be tucked in your goodies drawer. So your goodies drawer, you've got a lot of your user manuals, your 12 volt plugs, your 240 plug for your TV and your aerial. And they will be just in like so. Okay, so when cooking inside, you've got your gas burners through here and your sink combo, okay? So this is gonna have hot and cold water out of it. The first time that you're using your hot water system, what you need to do is what we call purging the tank. So this is assuming that your hot water system is dry. So what we do is we turn the hot water on, but not the hot water system. Let that run through. Now, if it hasn't been purged, now we do a lot of this at the dealership for you anyway, but if you ever do get into the occasion where there's no water in your hot water system, you turn that tap and let it run. It'll have a lot of hissing sound, which is air escaping. Once it runs with solid water like so, you don't need to worry about it because it's all purged. So once that has all heated up, you'll have hot and cold water out of here with your plug as well. So to do your cooking inside, press twist and on. Now, 
as silly as it sounds, you need to let it purge, but you also don't want to just have this just open. You need to make sure it's lighting at the earliest possible opportunity. Otherwise, bad things will happen. Something that is very highly recommended, if your large windows aren't open, you need to have a minimum of your hatch, okay? And that is just so fresh air is regulating through, or at least the bad air is has somewhere to escape. Please make sure that that is closed for travel. Even if it is open, it is designed to come down, but you don't want to bend anything there. Just make sure that that's closed for travel. Once you've finished your cooking, these are going to be hot, so don't put these down straight away. Just let them cool off a little bit before you push put those down there. Your microwave, you will need to run on 240. So you'll have your number set up there, which is how you know you've got power to it. Simply open like so, put everything, whatever you're needing in, start, it's just gonna be like the one at home. One key thing that I'd mention for travel is to take your carousel out and a very handy spot to put them, because this is glass, uh, in your pouch, just near the edge of the bed. Under here is where a lot of the business side of things takes place so we can slide that part out and when we lift this up you'll see that you've got your dual battery system which is all set up under here with your battery management system just through here your battery management system will automatically be able to tell if you're connected up to 240 if you're connected to your car which would just be 12 volt getting it that from your Anderson plug if you're using the solar that's on the roof or your auxiliary solar power which the outlet is outside I'll go through that with you as well but that'll automatically tell you don't need to do anything about it you just plug and play with this fridge being a 12 volt simply open up if the lights on it's on to adjust the temperature is actually just back down that way there in the back corner to pack up the first thing that we take is the door so we put these catches back on undo up here and hold that up undo the sides and the velcro and again i usually just fold that out the road now you slide your hand through so that way you can unpeel all of the velcro from outside Okay, now it's important to remember to lock the door to the frame. Otherwise, when you go to lift it up, the door's just gonna fling out. Undo the hinge. Now from the top, all that we wanna do is rock it towards us. So that way you can see it's already popped out of its locked position. Lift that up, out the road, like so. Now, from this position we need to bend the hinge the other way around so that way it sits as it follows the contour of the top of the van as closely as possible get your sashes locked in and the doors in travel position all right now we're going to start packing up the first thing to do before we start actually taking anything down is making sure that everything that is above this level on both sides of the van is clear because the beds are gonna slide in and meet in the middle, okay? A very handy thing is to move the curtains more towards the middle and the ones on the side have them a little bit more evenly spaced. The reason that we're doing this is so that way when we're packing up, it's less likely to bunch. Once everything's cleared from the tables, we can head outside, but firstly, we wanna get this turned off. So switch all of your lights and everything off. If you're wanting to keep your fridge cold, this load needs to stay on because that's your battery system. Your battery uh, is what's gonna charge and keep your fridge cold. So if you don't need to keep your fridge cold, we turn everything off. If you are wanting to, keep that on and switch everything off individually. Packing up is arguably the easier of the two. It's a matter of just doing everything that we've done, but in reverse. So bed supports 
out. But what we can do to get ready, because we're going to have to go back inside, is unzip all of the Velcro. Undoing this one for the moment. To undo here, it's simply pull down, gently bring that forward, and unclip. This can go just in like so. Beautiful. Same on the other side. Just unclipping, back outside. So from this position, this is when we're gonna start taking things down. So unpacking the C channels. It's important to remember that when packing up, once you've removed the C channels, don't push this back over. It's an easy habit, but we wanna leave that open and on velcro because we need to push it inwards and again just making sure that we leave that open once we've disconnected the bed supports and the c channels we can begin to push the bed in now because when you push the front bed in it's actually going to cut out the doorway to walk through it's easiest to do this half do the the rear bed all the way in and then come in and I'll explain the rest once we're inside but again initially just half once we're in the halfway position the best thing to do here is to actually hop inside and pull the canvas towards you from the inside now if it's bucketing down with rain be careful because it is going to be the exterior of the canvas that comes in so that way it folds evenly and closes evenly that will get your bedding wet if it's not dried correctly. Because we pushed this in halfway, this is actually stopped here, so perfect, because when this comes the whole way across, you actually can't walk in. So again, easy doing it halfway, but also handy doing it halfway for the rear, so that way we can actually pull the canvas in ourselves from here. Once we've got excess, we can pull it in, get it the whole way to hear that clunk. So just so you can hear that again, it's a very definitive clunk. I've just pushed it out a little bit. So what I usually do is I grab the closest to a corner that I can, closest to a corner that I can. So that way it'll fold like so. Get that a bit more out of the road. That one's going to be okay. Now the reason that I do that is because if you were to push it in the whole way, the chances of that binding at that slide is quite high. But if you only do it part way and then pull it in like so, it makes it much easier. You're less likely to have any bunching or gripping, binding, anything along those lines. So this is the only tricky part, is this one through here. Sometimes it can get stuck around the corners of the, the pole. So again, once the majority is there, we hop out and we push it in the rest of the way outside. So you can see that this is starting to wanna come in. So once that is then entirely pushed in, You'll notice that this entire walkway is now blocked, all right? But you can also see that anything that would have been on the table or on the benches would have been hit. Now, C channels cleared, beds pushed in, canvas in, it's time to start unwinding. The canvas is gonna naturally wanna fall out that's fine. Again, when we're about three quarters of the way, maybe even halfway, it'll, it's always good to just 
stop, look, make sure it's all coming down evenly on both sides, which it is. At the moment, we've only got, oh, what's that, about a foot or so before it's actually hit the bottom, but all the canvas is still out. This is usually the point where I start to go around and actually fold it in. So that way it's gonna sit a lot nicer, a lot more flush. usually around this point where again you just want to go around double checking if anything's hanging out like that for example we can push that up get that out the road the reason that we're doing that is to avoid any sort of pinching on the canvas that would create any sort of weak spots later down the track it's usually by now that if you've made a mistake packing up you can start to tell if something's bunched in this corner, this will be sitting up higher than that corner. So if, if you do start to notice that, it'll pay to wind it back up again, shuffle it around and get it back down, otherwise you're just fighting an uphill battle. The last little bit, just make sure that that guide wire is tucked away as well. This will get to a point where the natural weight of the roof isn't going to be enough to quite pull this down so we've got these latches here now you see that at the moment that's only a couple mil short of where it needs to be so i usually put a little bit of oomph on there again just all that you're doing is squishing the air out of the canvas and locked same so a couple mil push it down just that little bit and locked and then same on the other side Push that down a little, done. Push this one, done. In like so, just unwind, just enough so there's a little bit of clearance. And then take that out, lift this up. So lift this part out, lock, and you'll see. So at the moment, that's not actually locked into anything. But when you get down, it's got pre-drilled holes or pre-drilled lock points, and it'll lock in automatically. With your picnic table, because this, they do sit up nice and flush, you're gonna have two locks there. A common thing that does get overlooked is when it is locked, it actually slips on the outside of the picnic table, not in the gap. So that way when people drive along, this comes out because wind gets in, it hasn't been locked correctly. So just make sure that it's locked in the actual gap part itself, you'll be fine. Mate, once you're all set, ready to go, and you're hooked up, jockey wheels off. Of course, making sure things like your TV antenna are down, your hatch is down, your picnic table's locked, and your gas bottles are off. The last thing that you want is to be driving down the road with your hot water system on, bad time. So make sure that these are off, jockey wheels off, and again, the very distinct sound of, so that way you know that you're locked in. Safe travels.